Hi guys, I've been given this exam problem from last year's uh, chemistry university entrance exam. So um, it's getting close to exam season in my part of the world. So you're probably going to see a lot more of these style videos come up on my channel. So without further ado, let's get to it. So the question is saying we've got a 25 mil solution of nitric acid. So let's just make sure we know what that is. That's H. NO3 at 25 degrees contains that many moles of hydrogen ions. Calculate the hydrogen ion concentration and the pH of the solution. Okay, so this part here only worth two marks, so you're not going to expect that it's going to take too long to do. So let's go for it. So the concentration of hydrogen ions, so we can write that like this, the concentration of H+. Plus. Because nitric acid fully disassociates, is going to be equal to the number of moles of HNO3 divided by the volume of HNO3. So when you, I'm going to try and set it out like I would in an exam as well, so you can, um, you know, show your examiners exactly what you're doing. So it's it's nice to write down the formulas that you're given. So the number of moles of uh, hydrogen ions is 8.5 times 10 to the negative 3. 8.5 times 10 to the negative 3. And that's divided by the volume. Now we have to make sure the volume is in litres. So that's going to be 0 0.025. Now a quick, like plug that into the calculator. That's going to give us 0 0.34 moles per litre. Great. So that's the first part of the question done. So that's the hydrogen ion concentration done. Now we're just going to get the pH. So next thing we do is we just write down what the pH equation is. So the pH of a solution is equal to the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration, which is equal to, in this problem, the negative log of 0 0.34. And that is equal to 0 0.469. So there's no units for pH, but we can tell that this is um, just for our own benefit. This is very acidic. You're not, you wouldn't need to write that, but this here for the two marks, you've got the first mark and there's the second one. So moving on to the next question, part of the question. So this one's worth five. So this is going to take a little bit more um, working out, I would say. So it says calculate the pH of the solution after 20 mils of 0 0.3 moles per litre potassium hydroxide solution is added to the original 25 mils of nitric acid. So this is what's called a um, acid and a acid and a base. So this is a neutralization reaction. Wow, I can't believe I forgot that for a second. So Basically what this is going to do is it's good to write out our equation. So we're going to have H NO3 plus, what have we got? Potassium hydroxide. So that's KOH is going to give potassium like that. And we have plus H2O. So this is how we're going to we're going to use this reaction to get all of our ratios correct. So without further ado, the first thing we need to work out is we need to always work out the number of moles that we've been given of KOH. That's the most important thing. So that's quite easy. The number of moles of potassium hydroxide will equal the concentration times the volume. 
So it's just a rearrangement of this formula we've used in part A. So the concentration is 0 0.3 times by the volume, which is 0 0.2. And that gives us 6.0 times 10 to the negative 3. Cool. Moles. Now, basically what we need to do now is we know that the number of moles, we can write, let's write it over here in a different colour. We know that the number of moles from the above question of HNO3 is equal to 8.5 times 10 to the negative 3. So we're going to have a limiting reagent here because if you see up here we need one mole of HNO3 with one mole of potassium hydroxide to give KNO3 plus water. So basically, if we were going, this reaction was going to go to completion and we were going to use up both reactants, they would need to be in equal quantities. So because they're not in equal quantities, there's going to be a limiting reagent. So in this case, it's the potassium hydroxide. So it's always good to let your examiner know that you know that KOH is the limiting reagent. Cool. See, that even might be worth a mark. I'd have to look at the answer key, but you know, if you're struggling for marks, it's not it's always good to put those sort of things down. So basically what happens now is the final pH of the solution is going to be calculated from the remaining hydrogen ions that are going to be left after all of the hydroxide has been reacted. So we can say the number of moles of HNO3 remaining is equal to this one, subtract this one. So we're going to have 8.5 times 10 to the negative 3, subtract 6 times 10 to the negative 3. So that's equal to 2.5 times 10 to the negative 3. Cool. So to work out pH, you need the hydrogen ion, not the number of moles, you need the hydrogen ion concentration. So, on our next step, the hydrogen ion concentration is going to be equal to the number of moles of hydrogen ions divided by the volume, which is equal to the number of moles we just worked out, 2.5 times 10 to the negative 3. Divided by... Now, in my experience, this is where a lot of people make a silly mistake. The volume is not 25 or 20. We must add them together because they're being mixed. So the new volume is 0 0.045. And if we do that concentration or that calculation, we get 5.56. times 10 to the negative 2 moles per litre. Cool. So finally, we're going to work out the pH of the resulting solution. So we know pH is equal to the negative log of the H plus concentration, which is equal to the negative log of 5.56 times 10 to the negative 2. 
Now, this, I'm sort of running out of room here, but so let me just uh, put an arrow to here. So this, when we put this into the calculator, we get a salute, we get a pH is as equal to 1.225. So it's less basic, but it's still quite acidic, but it's less basic than what we had to start with, which would make sense because we're adding a base to the original um, nitric acid solution. So basically, if you're able to get all the way through and get the final answer of 1.225, then you're gonna get all five marks. But the important thing as well is if you're in an exam, the chances are you're not, some, in some questions you might not get through the entire thing. So it's important to at least get something down on the page, even if it's just writing down what the neutralization equation is. It might be worth a mark to you. So for example, for five marks, you'd probably want to have the equation down. You'd probably want to work out what the number of moles of potassium hydroxide is. You might get a mark for that. Knowing which one is the limiting reagent is probably worth a mark to you. Then finding out what is remaining and the concentration of hydrogen ions that's remaining is probably worth a mark to you. And then finally, once you've got those four, the final mark will come from actually determining the final pH. So you can see that even if you're not able to get through the entirety of the question, either you're running out of time or you just get a little bit of a brain fade during an exam, you can. there are certain things that you can write down to almost guarantee you'll get one or two, like, you know, be able to pick up one or two marks here or there. It's important when you're coming to an exam, especially if they're competitive exams to get into a university place. So I hope this video helped. You're going to see a lot more exam videos um, in the sort of the coming weeks. So um, stay tuned and I'll see you again next time.